Sturm Lowly equations. We now dealing with the second order differential equation. So the second order differential equation, which is in this form, is known as Sturm Lowly equations. d by dx, p of x, du by dx plus q of x, u plus lambda w of x u is equal to zero is Sturm Lowly equations. So the condition for Sturm Lowly equation is that. All homogeneous second order differential equations can be reduced into this form. And all coefficients are continuous on the finite closed interval between the limit A and B. P has a continuous derivative. U is called the solution of this equation if it is continuous differentiable between the limit A and B. This U required to satisfy some boundary condition at A and B. Now let us uh, discuss about the boundary conditions of this uh, uh, second order differential equations. Their solutions have to satisfy certain boundary conditions. The eigenfunctions u lambda of x, this function is nothing but the solution of second order differential equation has have to satisfy certain imposed boundary conditions. In our dynamical problems, we defined initial position x0 and initial velocity v0 as our boundary conditions. Similarly, here the boundary conditions are conditions on both end of the allowed range of variables. Here the boundary conditions are p of x, v star of x, du by dx at x is equal to a is equal to 0 and p of x v star of x du by dx at x is equal to b is equal to 0. Here u of x and v of x are solutions of second order differential equations. This can be written as v star p u dash at x is equal to a should be equal to v star p u dash at x is equal to b. This is the boundary conditions of the solution of second order differential equations. And the equation is l u of x plus lambda w of x u of x is equal to 0. So this is about the boundary conditions of the solution of second order differential equations. So next section is Hermitian operator. We know that L of u is equal to L bar of u if the op or if this operator is self-adjoint or it is a Hermitian operator. The self-adjointness along with the boundary condition will follow the uh, Hermitian nature of the operator. So L of u is equal to L bar of u. That we know that L of u or L, of L bar of u is nothing but d by dx of p u dash plus q of x into u of x. This can be written as p u dash the whole dash d by dx we can put p u dash whole dash plus q of x into u. Okay. Multiply with v star and integrate. Multiply the whole term with v star and integrate between the limit a and b v star l u dx that is equal to integral a to b v star p u dash the whole dash dx plus integral between the limit a and b v star q u dx integration by parts so when we integrate this equation that is a to b v star p u dash dx that is given by this is the first term when we integrate this equation uh, this is taken p u the whole p u is taken as the second term the first term is so so first term into integral of the second p u dash when you integrate you will get p, p here there is a p u dash is here p u dash all dash so when we integrate this you will get p u dash this is not p u here p u dash is here so between the limit a and b minus integral of differential of the first that is v v star dash into integral of the second that is p u dash dx. 
So when we apply the boundary condition, this term will vanish. The first term will vanish by applying the boundary condition. When we take the second term and do the same uh, principle integration by parts, that is minus a to b minus b star e u dash dx is given by minus v star first function here uh, this is taken as first function so here we consider v star p as a fun first function so the first function v star p into integral of the second u dash when you integrate the second function you will get u minus is third so between the limit a and b then the second term that is minus there is no minus sign here it is minus of integral a to b v star p u dash dx so this minus sign here minus integral so this minus and integral minus will become positive term so uh, so it is plus integral integral uh, differential of the first this is the first function so this is p v star dash integral of the second even u dash become u dx so this will be that term. so integrating the integrated part can be equated to zero using the boundary condition this is the integrated part thus using boundary condition this can be equated to zero so this term will become integral a to b p star l u dx that is equal to integral a to b u into p v star dash dx plus integral u into q v star dx. So this is nothing but integral a to b v star l u is given by using this formula this is nothing but a to b u l into v star dx l u into l v star dx that is integral a to b v star l u dx is equal to a to b u l v star dx so this is known as the condition for a hermitian operator the operator a is a hermitian with respect to u and v okay so the self adjoinness along with the boundary conditions form hermitian property so what is an hermitian operator hermitian operator is nothing but the operator which should be self adjoint and also satisfy certain desired boundary condition then we call that that operator as a Hermitian operator. The properties of Hermitian operators are the eigenfunction of Hermitian operator should be real. The eigenfunction of Hermitian operator are orthogonal. The eigenvalues of Hermitian operator form a complete set. Okay, first let us consider the, our equation, eigenvalue equation. L ui plus lambda i w ui is equal to 0. We know that L u i plus lambda w i is equal to 0. U i is our solutions of ordinary differential equations. Assuming the existence of a second eigenvalue and eigenfunction that is u j, L u j plus lambda j w u j is equal to 0. Okay, when we take the complex conjugate this form, you will get L into u j star plus lambda j star w u j star is equal to 0. Multiply equation 1, this is equation 1 with the u j star and equation 3 with u i and subtract. We have to multiply this with the u j star and multiply this with the u i and subtract this you will get u j star L ui minus ui L uj star that is equal to lambda 
lambda j star minus lambda i into w u i u j star. So when we integrate this between the limit a and b, and we know that L is an Hermitian operator, the left hand side this will vanish. That means lambda j star minus lambda i into limit integral a to b u i u j star w dx should be equal to 0. If i is equal to j, the integral cannot vanish except the trivial cases that is u i is equal to 0. So in order to vanish, in order to satisfy this it, this should be equal to 0, this term should be equal to 0. So that means u j star minus, u, not u j, lambda j star minus lambda j is equal to 0. That means that lambda j star is equal to lambda i, that is the eigenvalues are real. Then if this is satisfied only if the eigenvalue is real. Okay. Hence, we prove that eigenvalue of a Hermitian equation is real. The real values of Hermitian operator have a fundamental significance in quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, the eigenvalues corresponding to precisely measurable quantities such as energy and momentum are a positive quantity or this eigenvalues are, are have a a real number in the case of uh, so this eigenvalues of uh, physical quantities have some real numbers in the case of uh, quantum in quantum mechanics so it should be a real number because this uh, should be precisely measured So the real values of Hermitian matrix have a fundamental significance in quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, the eigenvalues corresponding, corresponding to precisely measurable quantities such as energy and momentum should be a real number. So uh, here in the case of uh, Hermitian matrices, its eigenvalues are real. Then if i not is equal to j, the, the above case if i is not equal to j, that uh, wi is not equal to wj, so wj star minus wi should not be equal to 0. So the function should vanish if integral a to b ui uj star w uh, should be equal to 0. This means that wi, the ui and uj should be normal then this can be equal to 0. So, so the functions u and u j are orthogonal with respect to weighing function w of x. This is, is equal to 0 only if u i and u j are orthogonal between the limit a and b. Now let us discuss about a very important and simple topic of uh, uh, this <coughs> second order differential equation that is gram schmidt orthonormalization. The gram schmidt orthonormalization is a method that takes a non-orthogonal set of linearly independent functions and we can construct an orthogonal set over an arbitrary interval and with respect to an arbitrary weight function or density function. So here in the gram schmidt orthonormalization we already have an independent solutions, linearly independent solution. So from that set of solution or that set of functions, we are going to construct an orthonormal set of functions. The functions in our hands are linearly independent. They are not orthogonal or they are not normalized. Now our aim is to orthonormalize the set of functions and this is done by the method is known as the gram schmidt orthonormalization method. 
So here we converting a non-orthogonal linearly independent functions into an orthogonal set of functions. So what is normalization means? This this is known as the normalization procedure. That is a to b phi a square w d x is equal to n i square. So here n i square is the uh, normalization factor. So we no attention has to be ha, uh, has been given to n i. Since our basic equation, this is our basic equation. L u i lambda w x u x is equal to zero is a linear and homogeneous function and multiplying any constant to this solution is also a solution. So suppose we have a solution of this function u of s. When we multiply a constant to this function, we'll it's all also its solution. So when we multiply a constant function here, the function u of x it's also a solution. So we don't bother about this constant term in i square. So in uh, unit normalization, we are equating this a to b phi a square w dx should be equal to 1. If each of this phi a is multiplied with n i minus 1, n i minus 1 is nothing but divide phi a with n i is nothing but multiply phi a with n i minus 1. So that the new normalized normalized phi's uh, we, we we will get a new normalized phi functions okay so that means a to b phi a star here phi a is nothing but here phi a by n i so phi a square w of x dx is equal to phi so this is the general normalization condition or we can write integral a to b phi one of x phi i phi i of x, phi j of x, w of x, dx is equal to delta i j. If i is equal to j, its value is 1. If it's if i is not equal to j, its value is 0. So when two functions, uh, two functions i and j, if there is a two functions i and j, it should be a normal. Normal means delta i j is equal to 0. So for our interest, it is a to b phi a of x phi g of x w of x dx is equal to w i g. So the functions which satisfy these equations are orthonormal functions. Okay, orthogonal plus normalization. So let us consider three set of functions. First function, or we have in this uh, procedure, we have we will come across three type of function. First one is our original linearly independent set of functions or our solutions. So suppose we take it as a union of x. Uh, first, uh, there are n, n such functions. n is equal to zero, one, two, three, etc. N. If n is equal to zero, this is zero, u zero of x, u one of x, u two of x, etc. Second type of function is nothing but we are we will derive this or we will obtain this function from our original function. Next function is orthogonal set of function phi n of x. Okay, this uh, orthogonal function uh, is constructed from the uh, our linearly independent functions uh, that uh, we can see in our continuous. Derivations. So, final set of functions that is phi n of x, which are normalized to. So, which is which is we will obtain phi n by the normalization of psi n. Here, this is psi n, not phi. N, okay. First, uh, u n, psi n, then phi n. U n is our linearly independent function. Psi n are our orthogonal set. Phi n are orthonormal set. Okay, so u n is linearly independent, non orthogonal, and uh, unnormalized function. That psi n, psi n is linearly independent, orthogonal, unnormalized function. Phi
phi n is linearly independent orthogonal normalized that is this function is orthonormal functions so here we will normalize ortho normalize a set of functions using a simple procedure that procedure is known as gram qubit ortho normalization procedure so we have to take the gram qubit procedure take the nth function that is psi n to be ഈ പ്രൊസീജിയറിൽ നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യുന്നത് നമുക്കറിയാം മൂന്ന് ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് ആദ്യം നമ്മൾ എടുക്കുന്ന ലീനിയർലി ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻ്റ് ആയ ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് യു എൻസ് ഉണ്ട് പിന്നെ നമ്മൾ അവൻ എന്ത് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഓർത്തോഗ്നലൈസേഷൻ ചെയ്തു ഓർത്തോഗ്നൽ സെറ്റ് ആയ സൈ എൻ ആക്കുന്നു പിന്നെ സൈ എൻ എ നോർമലൈസ് ചെയ്ത് ഫൈ എൻ ആക്കുന്നു അപ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് ഓർത്തോ നോർമൽ ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് കിട്ടി ഇതിന് വേണ്ടിയുള്ള മെത്തേഡ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഒരു ഫംഗ്ഷൻ നമ്മൾ എടുക്കുക ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് സൈ എൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഫംഗ്ഷനെ എടുക്കുന്നു ആ ഫംഗ്ഷനെ നമ്മൾ നമ്മുടെ സൈ എൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഫംഗ്ഷൻ നമ്മൾ നമ്മളുടെ ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻറ്റ് ഫംഗ്ഷനായ യു എൻ്റെ യു എൻ്റെ യു എൻ പ്ലസ് ഒരു പാർട്ട് പ്ലസ് ഏത് ചെയ്യുന്നു യു യു എന്നിന് മുന്നേയുള്ള നമ്മുടെ ഓർത്തോ നോർമൽ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ അതായത് ഇപ്പോൾ സൈ സൈ എൻ ആണ് കണ്ടുപിടിക്കുന്നത് സൈ എൻ നമ്മളൊരു ഫൈ എൻ മൈനസ് വണ്ണിൻ്റെ കൂടി ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ആക്കി എടുക്കുന്നു അത് എഴുതുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് ഒന്നുകൂടി മനസ്സിലാവും നോർമലി ഇതാ ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ആണ് ഇതാണ് എൻ്റെ പ്രൊസീജിയറ് ഒരു ഫംഗ്ഷൻ സപ്പോസ് സൈ വൺ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഫംഗ്ഷൻ എടുക്കുന്നു സൈ വൺ എന്ന ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ ലീനിയർലി ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻറ്റ് ഫംഗ്ഷനായ യു എൻ്റെ കൂടെയാണ് യു എൻ പ്ലസ് എ കോൺസ് ഒരു ടേം ദിസ് വി ഹാവ് ടു കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് പ്ലസ് എ ടേം ദിസ് ഈസ് എ നോർമലൈസ്ഡ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഓർത്തോ നോർമലൈസ്ഡ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ആ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് തൊട്ട് മുന്നത്തെ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ആണ് അതായത് ഫൈവ് സീറോ ആണ് ഫൈവ് സീറോയുടെ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ആക്കി എടുക്കുന്നു അപ്പോൾ ഇതാണ് അതിൻ്റെ ജൻ ഈ പ്രൊസീജിയറിലാണ് നമ്മൾ അതിൻ്റെ കണ്ടിന്യൂ ചെയ്യുക ഓക്കെ അപ്പോൾ സൈ എൻ കിട്ടിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ പിന്നെ നമ്മൾ ലാസ്റ്റ് പ്രൊസീജിയർ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ സൈ എന്നെ നോർമലൈസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന പ്രൊസീജിയറാണ് അപ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് സൈ എന്നെ നോർമലൈസ് ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നമുക്ക് ഫൈ എൻ കിട്ടും അങ്ങനെ ഇപ്പോൾ സൈ എൻ കിട്ടിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ സൈ എൻ കിട്ടി അതിൻ്റെ നോർമലൈസ് ചെയ്ത് ഫൈ എൻ കിട്ടി കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ പിന്നെ അടുത്തത് ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് സൈ എൻ പ്ലസ് വൺ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാനാണ് സൈ എൻ പ്ലസ് വൺ ഇതേപോലെ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാം എവിടെ നിന്ന് സൈ എൻ പ്ലസ് കണ്ടുപിടിക്കുന്നത് ഫൈ എന്നിൽ നിന്നാണ് അതിന് തൊട്ട് മുന്നത്തെ നോർമലൈസ്ഡ് ഫംഗ്ഷനിൽ നിന്ന് നമുക്ക് അതായത് ഫൈ എന്നിൽ നിന്ന് നമുക്ക് സൈ എൻ പ്ലസ് വണ്ണിനെ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാൻ പറ്റും പിന്നെ അങ്ങനെ അങ്ങനെ അടുത്തുള്ള ടേംസ് ഒക്കെ അതിന് മുന്നത്തെ പ്രീവിയസ് ടേമുകളുടെ ഇതിൽ നിന്ന് നമുക്ക് നെക്സ്റ്റ് ടേമിനെ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്ന ഒരു മെത്തേഡാണ് ഗ്രാം ഷിമിറ്റ് ഓർത്തോ നോർമലൈസേഷൻ മെത്തേഡ് so first we have to take the first function that is n is equal to 0 so psi 0 apo namukku ariyam n n is equal to 0 ennu parayumbo u n of u 0 ennu parayna function kittum nammal adine orthogonalize cheyanda avashyam illa kaaranam first function aanu aa function il function aakki edukkam aduthulla function e ini verunna pinne ullu edukkunna function adine normalized functions aayittu kandupidikkum appo ottu function ullu kondu adine normalize cheyanda avashyam illa normalize cheyalla orthogonalize cheyanda avashyam illa നോർമലൈസ് ചെയ്യണം എന്ന് നമ്മളൊരു ഫംഗ്ഷനെ പക്ഷേ ഓർത്തോഗ്നലൈസ് ചെയ്യേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല ഫസ്റ്റ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻ എടുക്കുമ്പോൾ അതിന് എന്ത് ചെയ്യേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല ഓർത്തോഗ്നലൈസ് ആയിട്ട് ചെയ്യേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല രണ്ടാമത്തെ ഒരു ഫംഗ്ഷൻ എടുക്കുമ്പോഴാണ് ആദ്യത്തെ ഫംഗ്ഷന് ഓർത്തോഗ്നലായിട്ട് അടുത്ത ഫംഗ്ഷൻ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കുന്നു പിന്നെയുള്ള ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഈ രണ്ട് ഫംഗ്ഷനും ഓർത്തോഗ്നലായിട്ട് അടുത്ത ഫംഗ്ഷൻ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കുന്നു എന്നിട്ട് ഓർത്തോഗ്നൽ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ കണ്ടുപിടിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ആ ശേഷം അതിനെ നോർമലൈസ് ചെയ്യുന്നു ഇതാണ് പ്രൊസീജിയർ അപ്പോൾ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻ എടുക്കുന്ന ഇതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ അതിന് ഓർത്തോഗ്നലൈസേഷൻ്റെ ആവശ്യമില്ല അപ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് എന്ത് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും യു എന്നിനെ നമുക്ക് യു സീറോ നമുക്ക് സൈ സീറോ എന്ന് എഴുതാം ഇനി അടുത്ത അതിൽ നിന്നുണ്ടാക്കുന്ന നോർമലൈസ്ഡ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻ സോ ഫൈവ് സീറോ ഓഫ് എക്സ് ക്യാൻ ബി ഒപ്റ്റൈൻ ആസ് ഫൈവ് സീറോ ഓഫ് എക്സ് ഇസ് ഇക്കൽ ടു സൈ സീറോ ഓഫ് എക്സ് ഡിവൈഡഡ് ബൈ ഇൻറ്റഗ്രൽ സൈ സീറോ സ്ക്വയർ ഡബ്ല്യു ഡി എക്സ് ഹോൾ ഡേസ് വൺ ബൈ ടു ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ നോർമലൈസേഷൻ പ്രൊസീജിയർ ഓക്കെ സോ യു വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഫോർ നെക്സ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ഈസ് ടു ഫൈൻഡ് ഔട്ട് നമ്മളിപ്പോൾ എന്ത്
phi 1 kandu pidikkanu okay so next one is psi 1 of x that is given by first is psi 1 of x evadna kandu pidikkunnathu u1 of x so it is written as u1 of x plus a10 which have we have to calculate into phi 0 of x phi 0 ennu vane idinne lower aayittulla normalized aayittulla function aanu phi 0 of x so we find uh, we derive or we will find out psi 1 from u1 and uh, phi 0 of x okay so phi 1 of if we get phi 1 of x when we normalize this phi 1 of x you will get this so this is psi 1 of x if we get psi 1 of x when we normalize this we will get phi 1 of x so psi 1 of x should be orthogonal to phi 0 uh, this orthogonality leads to so this idum nammal adutha kandu virikkana phi 1 ennu parayina function should be orthogonal to this function psi 1 should be orthogonal to this phi 0 so using orthogonality condition nammal apply cheyumbo integral psi 1 psi 1 of x into phi 0 of x into w w dx into dx we have to integrate this function first we have to multiply this uh, uh, function with uh, phi 0 of x ella function phi 0 of x which ya and integrate cheya between the limits so this can be written as psi 1 of x phi 0 of x W D W into D X. Okay, that is given by U one of X phi zero of X D X plus A one zero integral phi zero into phi zero phi zero square D X. अब phi phi one and phi zero should be this is phi one phi one and this is phi one. So phi one and phi zero should be normalized. so when we integrate this this term will vanish this uh, this and this should be normal nammal normal function kandu pidikkan povunnathu appo this should be normal so this term will vanish so you will get a10 as this when we take this term into the left hand side a10 is equal to minus integral u1 phi0 w dx okay so we get a10 and uh, and using a10 when we apply this equation in the equation of psi you will get psi1 you now we get psi1 from psi1 we can find out phi1 so phi1 is nothing but psi1 of x divided by integral psi1 square w of x dx whole is 1 by 2 this is the normalization condition in general any function psi i from psi i we will get phi i as phi i of x is equal to psi i of x divided by integral psi i square w of x dx all raised to 1 by 2 okay so in general this can be function psi i can be find out psi i is equal to u i plus a i 0 phi 0 plus a i 1 phi 1 plus a i 2 phi 2 etc etc till a i into here this is phi i so phi i minus 1 into a a i <coughs> into i minus 1 phi into i minus 1 so where we will get a i j a i j as Minus integral u i into phi i phi j w dx. So from this we can find out this. When we find out psi i, we can find out phi i by this uh, this normalization conditions. So for some. So this about the. This is about this. <coughs> gram schmidt ortho normalization so we get a set of normalized ortho normalized functions from a linearly independent function so let us consider one example a power series expansion of un of x 
or say this expansion is given by u n of x is equal to x raised to n, where n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. Convert this u n of x, u n of x into an orthonormal set of functions. Here, this u1, u2, u3 are not orthonormal. We have to construct an orthonormal set from this linearly independent set ui's. And the weighing function is 1 and the limit of integration is minus 1 to 0. So, so first function we have to take n is equal to 0. So, x raised to 0 that is 1, u0 is equal to 1. So, u0 is equal to x raised to 0 is equal to 1. What is u1? u1 is x, u2 is x square, u3 is x cube like that. So, first we have to construct first our first orthogonal function that is u0 is equal to 1. So, there is no other function. So, it is an orthogonal function of uh, also. So, phi 0 where will function within uh, first function that is the number orthogonal set so we can write this as psi 0 is equal to u0 psi 0 in the first orthogonal uh, first psi 0 in the bar the u first function in the psi 0 in the u0 so that is equal to 1 then we have to find out a function which is normalized function so we have to normalize phi 0 phi 0 is equal to psi 0 divided by square root of psi 0 square omega uh, weighing function omega square of w square dx all raised to 1 by 2. So that is given by psi 0 is nothing but 1, 1 divided by integral. This value is <coughs> 1. So this is minus 1 to 1 dx all raised to 1 by 2. So that is given by 1 by 1 minus minus 1 whole raised to 1 by 2 so that is given by 1 by square root of 2 so phi 0 is given by square root of 1 by square root of 2 okay so from phi 0 and uh, u1 u1 is third u1 is nothing but x from u0 and phi 0 we can calculate psi 1 psi 1 is a function which is normal to this phi 0. Phi 0 is a normal item, first function. The second function is normal, normal, either like orthogonal, normalization is like orthogonal function. But psi 1 is an orthogonal function. So psi 1 is equal to u1 plus a10 phi 0. That is equal to u1 is x, a10 and phi 0 we know that 1 by square root of 2. So when we calculate this, a10 is given by, so here a10 is given by minus integral u1 phi 0 w dx between the limit minus 1 to 1. So that is, is given by minus integral minus 1 to 1. u1 is nothing but uh, u1 of x is x into uh, what is uh, when we substitute the value of phi 0 1 by square root of 2 dx. So, when we uh, do the integration and the putting the limit x square, uh, when we putting the limit its value is uh, 0. So, a1 0 is 0. So, what is psi 1? Psi 1 is nothing but u1 that is x. Next, we have to normalize this function. So, phi 1 is equal to psi 1 divided by integral square root of uh, psi square w square dx all this 1 by 2. So, what is psi 1? Psi 1 is equal to x x divided by integral between the limit minus 1 to 1. Psi square is nothing but x square dx that is equal to x divided by uh, when, when we do this integration we will get this and putting the limit we will get this value as x pi square root of 2 by 3 so we will get we will get the value of phi 1 is equal to square root of 3 by 2 x so this is normalized function next we have to calculate psi 2 from u2 phi 0 and phi 1 okay so psi 2 is 
u2 plus a2050 plus a2151 then by, by uh, we have then we have to calculate this a20 and a21 uh, and uh, we know that a20 is given by minus integral minus integral here this is <coughs> this uh, a20 is equal to minus integral u2 phi 0 dx so when we substitute uh, substitute uh, our values you will get this as minus integral x square 1 by square root of 2 w dx that is given by minus integral x square by square root of 2 into dx when we do this integration we will get the value as minus square root of 2 by 3 again a 2 3 a 2 3 can be find out by by integra integral minus integral u2 a21 is given by minus integral u2 phi1 w dx what is u2 u2 is uh, x uh, x square what is phi1 this is uh, this is square root of uh, 3 by 2 into x when we multiply this 2 you will get square root of 3 by 2 x cube dx between the limit minus 1 to 1 so when we do this integration we will get the value as 0 so we will get side 2 side 2 when we substitute all these values you will get side 2 is equal to x square minus square root of 2 by 3 into 1 by square root of 2 that is given by x square minus 1 by 3 that is given by x square minus 1 by 3. So, uh, you will get psi 2. From psi 2, we can calculate phi 2 by normalization procedure. So, psi 2 is equal to x, x square minus 1 by 3 divided by integral minus 1 to 1. x square minus, uh, minus 1 by 3. x square minus 1 by 3. The whole square into dx between the limit minus 1 and 1. So, when we do this operation, you will get its value as uh, square root of 5 by 2 into square root of uh, 5 by 2 into 3 x square minus 1 by 2. So, so, uh, so we will get uh, phi 2. Similarly, we will get, we can find out uh, phi 3 also its value will become, uh, uh, when we calculate this, we will get like this, phi 3 is equal to square root of 7 by 2 into 1 by 2, phi x square minus 3. Okay, 3 step is enough. So, in general, when we uh, write uh, phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, it will be in this form, phi n of x is equal to square root of 2n plus 1 by 2 into pn of x. This already you studied in your special function class. Okay, so uh, pn of x is the nth order legendary polynomial. So, using uh, gram schmidt process, we get uh, we uh, we can generate the legendary polynomial also. So, that about gram schmidt orthonormalization.